It is a dog. That is the big thing. And it's this dog. He's just coming now. And he, this is my dog, by the way. No other dog is going to look or behave like this. Um, he is um, the state of the art of what we can possibly make it. Um, he's about the only thing of any quality in this demo, by the way. Uh, please don't look at. Uh, please don't look at anything else. We, I know the textures aren't right. I know the lighting's wrong. I know you know that the grass is the wrong texture and the wrong colour. Please don't look at that. This is only here to show you the dog. Now let's talk about him. <clears throat> He's a fully morphing, uh, growing uh, dog. He will change from being cute. Uh -oh. He's pretty cute at the moment. Uh, into being e um, evil, he can change from being a Doberman-like uh, dog to a sheepdog-like dog. He has got a mind which is pure, pure and utter simulation. We are using all of our experience from um, the previous titles that we've done. Uh, and he has, that mind has three very important rules. And I'll talk about that now before we start doing things with <coughs> the dog. Uh, rule number one is um, actually I'll, I'll move a little bit. Rule number one is, um, and this is a, the most important rule of all: do not aggravate the player. If he is aggravating in any way, that's it. I've lost it. It's a stupid feature. You're going to hate it. So he must never aggravate. I'll point things out which he will avoid aggravating you. Rule number two is, this dog absolutely loves you. Loves you in a way that no other computer game character ever has. He worries about you, he wants to make you happy, he wants to please you, he loves the things that you like, he hates the things that you dislike. He will do anything to keep you safe. And that idea that simulation idea is what directs a lot of the dog's behavior. So let's show you how you control the dog. How do you control the dog? Well, uh, we did consider, not for very long, but we did consider that the blue button could be run, um, send, the yellow button could be wait, the red button could be attack, the green button could be um, dig, the down could be sniff, and, and then we thought this is madness. It didn't feel like a dog feels like a robot. So we threw all that away and said, you do not control your dog by using anything on the controller at all. You've got to think of another way. Because he's got to feel like a dog, a real dog. And real dogs don't have buttons. And as they say, this only a bow. And they're really dumb. Um, so how do you control him? You control him by just playing the game, man. That's all you do. And he's going to look after himself, and there's loads of going to play it. So let's give you an example of that. Let's just go for a little uh, run round. Um, see where he is, there he is. Let's just go for a run round and he will instantly pay his attention. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna have to center on him and just run round. So you can notice I'm running with him. He always wants to stay just one step ahead of me. That's very, very important. I've got the camera on him, by the way, not on. That's very, very important, I'll speak about that later. So his locomotion, what he does, his behaviour is all dictated by what I do. So let's give you some little cute examples. They are cute examples, I'm sorry, I'm unashamedly cute, but um, I think it's, uh, it's important to make you laugh. Um, now, what I did was, earlier I went out and I uh, bought him a toy. It was um, a toy and I then was mean and I buried the toy down here. And he smelt where it is and he's dug up his bloody squeaky ball. I hate the squeaky ball, I wish I'd never bought it from him. I hate him digging it up and I'm now going to tell him off. Um, there's a variety of ways of telling him off and one of the systems that we're going to use to tell him off now is the Fable expression system, which we had pioneered in Fable 1, which is back in Fable 2. So I can just simply, by doing the no expression, which no. I use generally now, just tells them off. It just says no. Uh, I can, no. with the expressions that have AI on them, so if you do them repetitively, they change context slightly, so if I can no. finally tell them off, you can see that. Really tells them. 
all the expressions work with the dog and also work with other characters. So he will do things when other characters are doing. So I can do this. <laughs> I'm really scared. Uh, I can even do this, which is very funny in England, but not very funny in America. We find that very funny. That's going to sell 50,000 copies more. <laughs> um, now, uh, so he's a bit depressed about this. So let's, okay, we're going to throw his ball. Uh, this is cute. This is the Nintendo moment. I'm being blatant about it, but you will love it. You will love playing with the dog like this. You'll love showing it off. Your girlfriend will love playing with it, with a dog like this. And this is, you know, this is what a role playing game's about. It's not only about being a hero, it's also about doing cool stuff. He is amazing. He, I want you really to believe he's a real dog. And that is very important to me. Anyway, enough playing around. We're adventurous. We should be role playing. We should be fighting and killing things. Let's do that now. Let's go exploring. So, uh, this section of the wood and this particular bit of, because I'm a bit rushed in my time here, normally there's another section which I'm going to do on Thursday, but this particular bit of the wood has been set up. This is a familiar path, we've trodden it a few times, and he has, so ask yourself what his job is here. What sort of gameplay can we get out of this dock? I'm going to move this around to the front of the screen. Um, right, uh, where is it taking a wee? I uh, apologise for that, it's a bit embarrassing. Um, his job at this stage, he stays in front of me, that's very important. It's very, quite often with co-op characters in games, they stay at the side of you or they stay behind you. He's in front, he's scouting, he's looking for treasure, he's looking for new things, that's very important. He's also doing something else which is really interesting in gameplay. This is just him travelling, man. He's protecting my back, but he's also, you'll notice that something is missing from this screen. And what is it? It is, it used to be here, the minimap. God, I hate that thing. I hate the fact that in Fable 1, you could play the whole of Fable 1 with the minimap. The millions of pounds and hundreds of hours of work we put in 3D World worth nothing, because you can play the whole thing on the minimap. Can we get rid of that minimap? Can he be your guide? When you come to a junction like this, can he, can he point you down there? Maybe he's not the complete solution, but he's the partial solution. So what I want you to do, think of gameplay in this dog in a different way than you thought before. He's not a feature you activate on the buttons. He's a, he's a real machine, a real living machine that's there. So anyway, let's take him into another section of the wood. Head because he's unfamiliar with this section, he is first of all worried about me. That's firstly what he worries about. So he's gone on ahead and he's spotted something. He hasn't engaged it, that something, because that would be aggravating. And what he's spotted is these three hobs. There they are. And let's just um, pause again and look at these hobs. There's, um, you can hardly see them, they're just on the horizon, but these two hobs have got maces and this one's got a gun. How can I control the dog? How can I get gameplay out of the dog um, with, um, by, without any buttons? Well, the way you do that is the dog will look at what you're doing. So if I draw my sword, that tells the dog to attack the biggest threat to me, which is the guy with the gun. If I draw my gun, it tells him, attack the two people that are going to come running after me now. Um, and I'll look after the, the uh, guy with the gun. So let's do that. So I will now shoot uh, quick enough. Uh, and he, the, he, so he took out these, these guys here, or this one guy here, and managed to slow my opponents down. Now he doesn't have laser beams in his eyes, but he is a fully functional gameplay mechanic. Fortunately, uh, it's a cheap shot here, but it gives you an example. He did end up slightly hurt from that. Now, him being slightly hurt, um, you've got to ask yourself what sort of player you are. You may be the sort of player, there are going to be people out there, the last thing you want is a mangy, fluffy ball muck for yourself. You are absolutely free in this game to do what I'm going to do now. 
and that is to run away. And your dog, you don't have to take him on an adventure. You can run away into the distance and your dog loves you so much, he will do everything to find you. He will, he will crawl along the ground slowly with his poor paw getting more and more hurt for hours if necessary until eventually he hunts you down. Maybe when you're in some pub flirting with a girl, taking a beer or playing a pub game, you'll hear the scratching on the door. This door will open and this horrible blooded mess will come in at your feet. And everyone in the pub will turn around and go, oh, What? Who would do such a thing? And that's going to be you. And I know that is going to pull up some people's heartstrings, and that's why he is such an important gameplay mechanic. Because what I think is that you end up caring for this. And if you end up caring for this dog, then, um, just heal. If you end up caring for this dog, then I've got you.